In this video, I'm going to go over a simple list example in C Sharp. So I've modified the array example that we did a couple videos ago. So in this, in this problem, what, what I want to do is I want to keep prompting the user to enter grades until some negative grade value is entered. The negative grade value will be kind of our sentinel exit from the loop that controls us entering grades. Once all grades are entered, I want to count the number of passing grades, how many grades were greater than or equal to 60. Now there are many ways we could do this, but I'm going to show us how we could use a list to help us accomplish this goal. So, all right, I want to, for the first part, we need to enter in grades. In this, in this case, I don't know how many values I want to save in my program. And so it's hard to use an array. It's hard to think, should I make an array that's size 100? Well, what happens if the user wants to enter 101 grades? So instead of using a fixed data structure like an array, I'm going to choose to use a list data structure. A list is like an expandable array. So let's go ahead and create a list that will hold a certain number of double grade values. So the syntax to declare this list is as follows. I'm going to create a list object that holds double values, and I'm going to name this list grades. Now I'm going to call the constructor to build this list object. So I'm going to have the new keyword. I'm going to build a new list that holds double values, and I have a pair of parentheses that indicates we're calling the constructor of this class, of the list class. So right here, we've created an empty list. Now it's time to set up a loop that's going to allow us to enter in grade values and each valid grade that is entered I want to add it to the list. So let's go ahead and kind of set up this loop here. So first we need a prompt to enter in, in the first grade. So I'm going to prompt for the first grade. I'm going to say console dot uh, da, 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 let's see console.write, please enter a grade. And then we're going to read in a double value for the grade. So I'm going to create a double variable that holds the grade. And I'm going to create a Boolean value that I can test whether the user inputs, the user input can be parsed into a double or not. So I'm going to create a protected prompt. Let's make a note of that protected prompt. So I'm going to say boolean parse OK is equal to double dot try parse console dot read line. I'm going to try to stick the result into the grade variable. Now I have to check to make sure that this is a valid value. So I'm going to say while parse OK is not equal to true. While the parse fails, what do I want to do? Well, I want to reprompt. So I'm going to say console.write invalid value. Try again. And then we will try to get the next value from the user. So these lines here just make up a protected prompt. So once I get past these lines, I can start testing if First, is the grade valid? If it is, I need to add it to the list and get the next grade. If the, va if the grade is negative zero, then we're done, and we have an empty list. So I'm going to set up a loop that, that allows me to keep entering grades as long as the entered grade is positive. Okay, So maybe this will look something like this. While the grade is greater than or equal to zero, then I'm going to add the grade to the list, and then I'm going to prompt for the next grade. That's the work that I'm going to be doing in this loop. Once the grade is finally less than zero, this expression is false, then we go and count, we, then we will count the grades. Okay? So adding a grade to the list is as simple as we, taking, we take our list name, which is grades, and I'm going to call the add method and pass in the grade value that we just got from the user. So that's, we've added the grade to the list. And now to prompt for the next grade, I'm just going to copy my protected prompt here. So we'll just 
just copy, whoops, we'll just copy this whole thing, move it into our loop, and I don't need to redeclare the grade variable, that's already declared, and I don't need to redeclare the parse OK variable, that's already declared. So this should be a good valid loop. Prompt to initialize the condition variable. As long as that condition variable is greater than zero, the work is added to the grades list and then reprompt. All right. So at, so the, the list work here is just line 29. I'm adding a value to my grades list. Now, how are we going to count all of the passing grades? Well, we can iterate over a list the same way as we iterate over an array. We can iterate by index or by value. Because we are going to be reading values from the list, I can use either pass by index or pass by value. Both allow read operation. So first, let's build a, a loop that loops over the list by index. So we will first loop over the list by index. So I'm going to build a counter controlled loop for int i is equal to zero. i is going to be accessing each index of values in the list. Now, I don't know when to stop. Well, I mean, I do know when to stop. I need to stop indexing when I get to the, the value, the size of the list, minus one. If there are three items in the list, then my indexes will be zero, one, two. The last index is, will be one less than the size. So I'm going to set up my counter control loop to keep counting while i is less than my list dot count. Now the count property in a list is the same as the length property in an array. This count isn't counting anything, it's just telling us the size of the list. Finally, we're going to add one to the index each time. So this is how I set up a counter controlled loop to loop over each location in a list. Now if I were to do it by value, so we'll say second loop over the list by value. In this, in this case I'm going to use a for each loop. So I'm going to say for each integer value in my grades list. If you remember from the array video, this is exactly the same syntax for setting up the, the loop. Val is a temporary variable that's just going to have each hold each value that's um, from the list. It's going to grab each value one at a time, and then we can test it. And then grades, this represents the collection, the data, the data collection that we want to loop over. It doesn't matter if it's an array or a list or something else. So in this case, grades is a list. So we're looping over a list. Okay. So those are what our two loops look like. Now let's actually do the counting. If I want to do a counting operation, I need an accumulator variable. So I'm going to create a accumulator variable, and I'm going to initialize that accumulator variable to zero before I start counting. So initially we have zero, we've counted zero passing grades. Now let's build the condition under which we want to count. So only count passing grades. Well, a grade passes if the value at my index is greater than or equal to 60, then we have a passing grade. So I'm going to say count plus plus. When we iterate by index, grades at index i, when i is 0, we're pointing to the first element, the first location in my list. When i is 1, we point to the second element in the list. So as i increases on this counter control loop, we're just going to, we will be grabbing or looking at one spot, then the next in the list. So I'm going to compare each grade in the list, to see if it's greater than or equal to 60. If it is, I'm counting it. So when we're done here, we should have the final result. I'll say console.writeline by index, we counted this many passing grades. And we'll pass in our count variable. Okay. Now, how can we use a value, uh, uh, a loop that iterates by value to do, this, to do the same work? Well, I'm going to initialize my accumulator variable. We're just going to reuse count. In this case, 
each value that is stored in the list is going to be pulled from the list and temporarily stored in this variable. This variable could be named x or y or anything. I just named it val. So I can test that value. I can say if the value is greater than or equal to 60, if the value I just pulled from the list is greater than or equal to 60, what do, I, what do I want to do? I want to count it. So notice the difference between how we access values when we have when when we set up a a loop that iterates by index and how we test values when we set up a loop that iterates by value. And then finally we'll print the result. So I'm just going to reuse this output statement. We're counting by value this time and we should get the same amount. So notice the similarities and differences in iterating by loop, um, iterating by index and by value across a list. Very, very similar, almost identical to how you would do it with an array. Let's run it and see what happens. So I'm going to enter a grade. Let's enter in four passing grades, but I'll enter in a non-passing grade, a passing grade, a non-passing grade, and then we'll enter three more passing grades. Now I'm going to enter a negative grade, which should exit us from our, our grade entering loop. And we did. And then both by, by iterating by index and by value, we were able to count how many passing grades occurred.